and welcome back to the NA Finals for Week 2 of the SEC Qualifiers. Getting a look for the second time today at two teams that have had dominant performances, haven't dropped a game on their route up to the Finals. Dolson still joined by Mifflin to talk about the Finals here. You got Maxidi on one side, the Houdinis who we just saw on the other. Remember, Maxidi, we've only seen one game out of them today because they caused the other team to forfeit uh, in between Diesel, Sybil, Sops, Cope, Mando. This is a, a roster you argue could really fit in this league well. I would say they were the best roster after the quarterfinals that were still in it. They're so powerful. These guys have been around the scene for so long. They've been tearing up ranked. Yeah. They've been tearing up the SML. These guys, they're the team to beat right now. Then they've got to prove it today. And, and you know, so much. I think so much of the conversation today, and rightly so, has been around the solo lane and, and what a lot of those guys have been able to bring in their set earlier. Uh, Mando Warrior was such a focal point of Maxidi's win. Uh, talk to me a little bit about Mando. What do you like about this guy? Mando, he's got a very archaic god pool from what sure. I've seen in ranked. He, he plays like the first 50 gods released, but he plays them at a top level. Sure. And he plays so aggressively. He's the type of player who's going to look to push you out early and then move towards your tier two towers, you know, proxy that wave, and then continue rotating towards the middle lane. He's, he, he's an aggressive guy. Well, you, you talk about kind of old picks and bands and, and Bastet just now getting reworked. We saw a great example of what she can do. I argued the best thing about Bastet was Hindu having to get his face painted and doing a little song and dance, <laughs> but I thought that was the best thing to come out of the Bastet rework. Uh, <laughs> Mifflin thinks that it's, uh, it's actually just what she does and, and the damage that she brings to the table. You know, it, it's the sum of all the parts. You know, that Hindu skit. It's the Hindu <laughs> skit as well as, as, as right. what she brings. Do you think there's, a, I mean, people just now maybe getting used to Bastet. Is there a world where she maybe moves into pick ban kind of territory? I think so. It's really on whether or not we see that she can consistently do it at the top level. Right now we're only seeing it at this SML level slash qualifiers, but she's putting out so much damage. The only downside of Bastet is whether or not she can do it safely. Right. She does have that jump back that is a bit safer, but it is very telegraphed. Yeah. As well as the fact that she needs to get up close to deal the majority of her damage. But if she can continue to perform how we've seen today, right. she is at the top level. And we saw that kind of jump back red a couple times in the last set. We'll see where she falls maybe in this draft phase. Maxidi and Houdini's drafting for game one of the finals. Yamoja takes a back, back seat one more time. Kamazots follows up. I don't know if there's any more that needs to be said. I, the, the top six bands, I think, have been consistent all throughout this weekend. Kukul Khan made it through just once. once Maybe yes. some interesting building led to a loss for Kukul Khan. Odin, Persephone follow up. I think people, there were a few games early on where Odin was let through, and I, I think people realize that the potential he brings is just not worth letting in. Yeah, people seem to think that Odin can really only go towards the soul lane nowadays, yeah. but we've seen time and time again throughout these qualifiers that Odin really finds his home in support. He puts out all that pressure, and he as well he's just got the damage, and he can bring that tankiness, as well as a low cooldown team fight ultimate that is one of the few abilities in the game that forces people to change how they build. You have to look towards that phantom relic, yep. and it takes up one of those I slots. It, it, it's so potent. Well, we're not going to get to see that this time as he finds his way to the band column. First pick overall is, is Merlin here, followed up by a Cerberus and an Erlang Shen. Do you like the reach for the Merlin for the first overall pick? Merlin, it's, it's a high damage god. It, sure. it allows you to burn objectives very quickly. I think the real standout here is that Thor. Thor yeah. is a good god for shutting down Merlin. Merlin's only sure. got that low range blink to escape, and he's going to get poked out so easily by the Thor with a global ultimate, as well as the fact that Heimdall can match yeah. that pressure. I imagine we'll see him go towards the long lane. I'm not willing to confirm that just yet. He right. could also flex towards mid, which is going to affect Maxidi's bands here. Yeah, those Norse gods, man, they are, uh, they're in kind of pick band territory right now. Hunter focused for Houdini's with their last two bands, the Hu Yi, the X-Ball, both banned out. Uh, do you agree with them taking those two off the table with so many hunters still in the pool? Hu Yi makes absolute sense to me in that we need to ban out some hunters, right? That's yeah. one of the few things we can confirm Maxidi really needs in their comp. That X-Ball, though, is a little interesting to me. He's not really seen as much dominant play as he has in the past. Yeah, and they're going to grab the Iza. I mean, I, I don't know. At this point, you ban out those two, and you're playing against an Izanami instead. I don't know if you call that a win. 
No, Izanami has got so much lane <laughs> pressure. Zero percent pick rate so far in these qualifiers, though. So we, you know, untested at the professional level. Well, she's certainly a, a good god, and I, I imagine she'll have her stamp on this game. Fenrir rounds out Mexidi's composition <laughs> with Kulkulin for the Houdinis. Uh, what do you like in Fenrir? Do you like Mexidi reaching for him with her fifth pick? I like Fenrir insofar as I prefer him as a support. I imagine we'll see him go towards the jungle here. Erling Shen could also be in the jungle. If we see Fenrir support, he's going to bring so much lane pressure. Yeah. He's going to be able to clear the wave, and Fenrir's going to have that low cooldown jump stun up constantly to pressure out that lane. If we see him go towards jungle, it's a little bit iffier there. You, you still have to max the, yep. the jump rather than the brutalize, and it's really just about whether or not he can move around the jungle quickly. Fenrir in the jungle needs a lead, Fenrir in support facilitates a lead. Well, I'm going to be interested to see how this Poseidon and Merlin matchup goes in the mid lane as well. This should be a good one. Houdini's Mexidi on set. Graham Hindu Man Hatfield, take us in. Thanks so much, Dave Dolson Olson. Fantastic little performance on the desk there. Go, joining me on the cast. Welcome back. First of all, first cast of Smile. Yeah, and you know what? I get at least five names on Mexidi on set that I've been casting for years. Like, I can go back and probably find, like, Friday Night Smite and or Old Challenger Circuit highlights of these players. They've just been doing so well, I guess. Yep. Honestly, they've been able to escalate towards the top, but they're still coming around. And honestly, I'll tell you this, coming into this, I did not actually expect the Cerberus jungle of all of the options they had. That yeah. was kind of throwing me off, but granted, Cope played Ymir jungle earlier, so it's not really far-fetched for them. So maybe it's just Cope having a bit of fun with the Guardians in the jungle, showing that the... Yeah can be semi-viable, I guess. On top of that, though, this is the finals. It's the best of three. Both these teams have qualified so far to the group stages of the SEC. This is more for seeding than anything else yeah. and a bit more of like, well, how good are the opposition? And it's a fun little testing grounds as well. Like maybe Cope isn't 100% all in on going for these Guardians jungle and things like that. Sops taking this Izanami into the mid as opposed to Diesel taking the Merlin into the long lane, which more lately we've seen that kind of swapped. It's really just going to be coming down to what works now, what yeah. works best, how can we win, does this win, and if so, then in the group stage, we know exactly what we need to do or not do to make sure that we can qualify. Well, a bit of aggression from this Fenrir with Sybil and Diesel in lane, and that's one thing I want to note here. Diesel is playing the Merlin in the duo lane. Yeah. Is a Nami in the mid lane? Does this change things up at all? I think it's going to change maybe the pace. Well, it feels like it should change the pace of the long lane to be a little bit more on curve with Merlin, wait a little bit longer, but because they have the Fenrir alongside him, they can get aggressive, they can deal a lot of damage, and they can combo really well. A good Stun from the Fenrir jump, sets themselves up as a blink from Cope comes in. Okay, they find the follow-up. Well, they will get the beads on a spring at least, it's but Cope's still going to give the chase for a second or two at the tail end. I'm just wondering if they maybe did that to put, you know, they didn't like the matchup of Merlin versus Poseidon in mid, so they were like, yeah. and also with a Thor in the jungle, Merlin could be a little bit susceptible to that, so maybe they've tried to position Is normally there instead. And, I mean, it matches up overall in terms of pace of clear in the mid lane. So you're going to have Izanami holding her own a little bit better mm. and really solid getaway. You go underground, so you're not going to be susceptible to any damage there. And then you're invisible as you come out of your dash. So if you're trying to get away from Spreen, as long as he doesn't follow up immediately with a, an excellent stun, you should more or less be out of those early engagements from him. It's a good point. We've seen a lot of potency out of Heimdall so far. So no real surprises to try and see if they can mix things up a little bit against this Heimdall. Just so putting a, a long range mage that can kind of stay at distance is can be pretty useful there. Purple buff invade coming out though from Anxiety Onset here. Shia is here. It's a 2v1 scenario. Buff does get dropped down and that will go the way of Anxiety Upset. So a successful invade, but not a whole lot of experience gained from that. Yeah, I mean, you go in, you're able to get the buff, but you're, you're not finding, I think, as much as you want. I mean, Sop's actually looking for maybe more than they can. That's the thing I think Mixiety are a little prone to right now. It feels like they want to get aggressive, they want to get in and fight. Yeah. And they're not quite at the point where they can just win the fight outright. They're finding some poke. Sybil, at this rate, is not necessarily falling behind, but you can kind of see it slowing down. They're taking experience away from Shia, which will ultimately get this Fenrir ahead, but he needs to get to level five. That's when his kill potential escalates and maybe exponentially goes up because of what he can then set up for Diesel grabbing someone in that hole. Now Sops in the mid lane on this is an army mentioned a couple of times already. Copes a little bit behind in farm at the moment, I'd say, but he's at least keeping pace with Spreen. 
And I think that's where the pressure's really having to come from with this is an army here in the mid lane. Yeah. It's just allowing Cope to catch up in farm a little bit, continue this farm route, because in the early Man. stages, Cerberus is clear, isn't necessarily the most potent. No, it's not going to necessarily be like, it's not what you're writing home about right yeah. now, right? You're looking at him, and realistically, you're looking at a lot of members on Mech's ID for their level Ooh. five and what they're going to be able to accomplish then. Unusual situation there. Solo kill in the solo lane. It's not often you see solo kills this day and age. Cope now going to rotate in, though, and try and punish, but a great ultimate out of heed to avoid the knockup out of Cope. There was a chance there that Cope could have been in for a, a nice little potential pick under that tier one tower. And you're also seeing the difference between running a Guardian there versus running an Assassin. Assassin takes that fight, potentially even with the CC immunity, is at least able to poke heed down to close to death, if not get the kill. The Guardian... You have Cerberus just kind of go, oh, look, I'm scary, right? Haha, <laughs> I can ult. And that's where he comes through. His ult's going to be awesome for ganks. His damage, not so much. He yeah. needs more follow-up from his team. That's a lot what happens with the Guardians in that jungle position there, for sure. So a little back at what happened there with Mando Warrior. You can see it in the top oh, left of your screen low. right now. He is low, and he's got his ultimate up, but still... Unsurprised to see that pick up there. Unfortunate situation, but definitely a benefit for the Houdinis. And I just hear a Thoral crashing in. They were hoping to catch Mando Warrior in the rotation to his blue. Instead, he's stuck in the laning phase, and the blue will be stripped away. Mando does have that Berserker shield online. It's only really good on those auto attack based characters. Yeah, I mean, being able to not only good on the auto attack based characters, but also help them in the matchup a little bit. Admittedly, you get first blood like that, and it, it's kind of like a free trip back to base. I guess you could look at it that way as Kraken comes out in mid. Sops, again, that getaway is going to be really solid for him as long as he has it up. And yeah, just going to be careful about the looking time. Looking to get aggressive? Yeah, looking for the red buff now, knowing Kraken's down. This is a chance for him to on set to get in there. But a good walls will force the bees out of Sops. Great shell coming to play from Sybil there. And the Berserk will be enough to bring him down. Shia will dash away back to safety, but that's an answer back from Anxiety, who now managed to strip away the red buff. They steal that. They're zoning out Spring as well. Cope is just doing his best to make sure no one can come home. If his team was still around, if they had waited a little bit longer around that red buff, this actually might be a could have been a kill onto Spring. Because Cope does have that ultimate. If not, it could have forced the beads one more time like he did at the Ooh, very beginning. Sops, of this just being a little bit greedy there in the mid lane. I could see yeah. that one coming, you know. Less than 50% health, hanging around, thinking he was okay. Remember, he just lost the beads in that last fight. We call that the Zapman effect. You just, there, one more wave. Yep. That's all you need. One more wave. I mean, he could have Everyone is prone to. More. And funny enough, speaking of Sops a little bit more in that mid lane, going for the Transcendence here. Plenty of power on this item, a little bit yeah. of cooldown, obviously. But he is going a little less lifesteal in this option, which makes him a bit susceptible. It's going to be maybe a higher power curve for him. He's going to hit harder, but not sustain as much. Mm. And so moments actually like that last engagement, probably going to hurt him a little bit more now when he's not able to come through. If you have lifesteal in that kind of scenario, you go up in health, maybe Thor doesn't double tap you as easily. getting aggressive against Heimdall, but Heimdall doing a good job of peeling himself away for the most part there in that scenario. And keep an eye on that link, because that looks like how Diesel wants to play this up against Let's Nestor here. Up. But Spring going up, looking at Mando Warrior, who's doing a bit oh. of proxy farming. He's overextended here and still in trouble. Goes into tower range, unfortunately, he's very low on mana. While he's going to fall down here, there is a gank going on the mid lane at the same time to try and make up for where they're losing in the solo lane, and Sops gets himself a kill. Cope still, though, diving in, looking at Shia, pulls him back oh, just towards the edge of the tower range. The stun did connect, as you said, and Shiva only level four, and that stops with a double kill, but Spree on the rotation will at least answer back. It's two for two across the map. Speed buff, mobility, everything you need from Spreen. He's part of both of the kills that his team's able to get, so it's good for the jungler. Oh, yeah. And again, building on that lead. Earlier on, he kind of got, you know, pu pushed out a little bit more, had his beads forced. So two kills onto him, now a level lead over there. It's at least going to help try to balance out this mid-deficit they have. Poseidon at 0-2, he's down two levels now. Bayonari needs a little bit more push to make sure that he can well, fight back. Red buff stripped away again by my anxiety, and once again, it's given over to Sybil. They keep giving it to this Fenrir here. I like that. Why? Um, you're stripping it away, so you don't necessarily need it for your team. You have your own red buff to then give to either Sops or Diesel, whoever you want. Sure. And now you're setting up Sybil to get more aggressive. You're just saying, hey, Assassin, go do more damage. Jump That's in and control him. Sybil's the key. He's playing the support role, but he is an Assassin. And again, he'd here in the solo lane. Might be able to get another kill. 1v1 against Mando, and Mando just trying to buy some time. Still has his ultimate up. He's not over-invest in here. So he'd wait for his cooldowns. There's a rotation coming in from both junglers at the same time. Tower Dave comes in, but a great ult out of Mando there to sustain him back up. And it will keep him topped up after he transforms. 
and also gets the damage off. It's going to be a one for one as the junglers finally turn up and make sure they pay. But it could be Spreen in more trouble. And it's all on the mana cost. I don't know if you need the ult, but Coat Baby is going to make sure he seals the deal with it either way. And that was just four, no mana. Coat yeah. Baby, full mana, able to do pretty much whatever he needs as long as his cooldowns participate with him. Action everywhere. This is what you expect to see in NA. Fighting on, fighting on, fighting over nothing. Still under the tier oh, one. Spree. Diesel's here, but keep an eye on Shia around the back. And does Diesel know about it? When he's stepping up, because there's a gank on the other side too. And Shia didn't find the route he was after. Meanwhile, Sybil did at least force back Ness for on that left-hand side, but now Shia could Man. be under a bit of pressure here. Shia, I mean, already behind, going to get taken down. Good stun to at least keep Sybil pushed away, but Sops is rotating in up at the top. You can see matching up with the Poseidon, trying to figure out where they want to go. But she is level six. That just connected. I was like, you know, you, you still could have maybe gone in and tried to stun out, deal something to the Merlin. With a four level deficit, Shia just doesn't have any impact in that dual lane right now, it feels I like. I think a lot of why she has fallen behind here is because he's Finry. still given a little bit more of this farm to his Hunter yep. and to the mid lane that's lost some in the jungle. Sybil gets Ooh. dunked on by Spreen and one full combo rotation brings him down. Now Sops is kind of in no Sops. man's land. The stealth wears <laughs> off. The walls collide. It forces the beads and the chase is on. Root will connect and Sops is in hell, or at least he will be in the fountain. That's going to be a quick burn. I don't know if I like Coke coming in. Kraken's going to come out onto him as well. And that's just a good turnaround. That is pretty much exactly what you need if you're Poseidon is two levels behind. A kill onto the opposing mid laner to make sure they don't get farmed. A yep. kill for your mid laner. And now you're going to be back in it, farming up a little bit. And another fight where Mando is just not in control. And now also, there's a fight on the left-hand side as Spring combines as well to make sure they get that kill onto Diesel in the dual lane. Houdinis are pulling a Houdini right now and getting the scrap of this game into their advantage. They're still down on gold, even though they're ahead in kills. A lot of that's coming down from the support right now, though. I think they're just stripping so much jungle away from Houdini's if you're mm. Maxi onset. That red buff and purple buff have very barely been going to you as Houdini's. So you're losing a lot of experience for Shia. You're losing a lot of gold in that area. But I think you're making up for it in the fact that Spreen is 5-1-2. and two. Yeah. This Thor has a two-level advantage. The ult has felt just more impactful than so far what we've seen out of Cope. But late game, I think that might start to be a wash. You have essentially another tank, much like you would expect from having a, just a Guardian on your team, period, where Cope will more than likely be able to grab people like around Gold Fury Pit, around Fire Giant Pit, to help set his team up just a little bit more. Yes, I think you're starting to see our anxiety onset here. Their, their early game push power is very strong, very potent yeah. in some of these laning phases. But once we get to about the 8 to 10 minute mark, that's when Houdini's characters start to come online a little mm -hmm. bit more. And they're answering back now, trying to find themselves a window back into this one. And as it continues, we'll just see how the builds come along, because they are now here on this Poseidon. Yeah. Double lifesteal coming out so far. Hold that thought, Sheer in mid, looking at Sops, and Sops will get hit by those walls. And wow. they're dunked down from Spring 2. Chooses the right angle to juke back from away from the wall and Cope's there to pull them all but still stops for fall. Kraken connects on Cope but he's tanky enough for now. Sybil up downs and a stun after the fact will self peel but still the damage is done. Stops for Bayronary. Does that favor anyone? Honestly, it feels like it favors Mixiety just a little bit and only because one, a little bit of a weird build like you had pointed out going yeah. into this from the Poseidon, but also the fact that Poseidon's been the one playing catch up this entire time. If they're both off the field, it's going to give Sops just that little bit of advantage he still has kind of persisting through this death. Cub just about survives there. Spring didn't have the hammer up available to secure that kill at the tail end. And that's the funny thing you said there about the Poseidon build of like, it's not something we see normally. It's kind of hard to say whether it's right or wrong at this yeah. point in time with how the season's begun. But a lot of sustain in it, and maybe Divine Ruin could come into play some anti-heal as Mando just bites off way more than he can chew. Yeah, that was just wrong place, wrong time uh, from top to bottom. You are in their jungle, deep, surrounded by three members. You're not going to be able to walk away from that one clean. I think, that, again, that's just the, the power of Spreen right now. 6-1-3. and three. Jess now finishes his Jotun's Wrath, so he's in this fight, I think, even more than ever now. And that's the biggest threat. I mean, Poseidon the Kraken has been doing really well in these last few fights, but I'm looking at this Thor as the game changer. If you can start to shut him down, then you can start to maybe control this and turn that 11-6 deficit that you have Ooh, as Mixiety into something Diesel getting greedy better. for a kill on Ness for Hero Extended looking for it, doesn't realize the rotation is coming in, and Diesel is so and, uh, kill hungry. He'll be punished for that one. Ness fall back to base. And Sop says, what do you expect me to do there? I can't rotate to a tier two in the left-hand side. Instead, he'll eat a crack and at least part of it. The beads still help him out a bit. A great tidal wave. But the trade-out is 
pretty much even. If anything, it's actually favoring Houdini's for my liking because, well, they didn't use a relic. Oh, and Sybil's right here too, so he might even be able to clean up the kill. Won't dive that deep, he's not Got Diesel. It. But he makes a good rotation around, and that's just the biggest well, thing. You have to go deep for that kill now because of the fact that they just took out your mid laner. It's just the kill deficits are starting to build and build and build. And Sybil, in this kind of position, he's not necessarily far away from making it even worse for his team. No, nope. this is what I was expecting to see coming into the finals today. Go two teams that have qualified to the SEC group stages, but at the same time, played it a little bit more like Arena than anything else. A little else. loose, yeah. A little bit loose, a little bit of aggression. Obviously, some interesting picks, at least coming out from Anxiety Onset. Sure, with the lane switches and with some of these selections we've seen here, specifically that Cerberus. Fury, though, is finally taken for the Houdinis. And that'll be the first time, I feel, that they've had the lead, even though they've been in the lead on kills for a while. It's that amount of control. And I mean, even then, now the goal is 300. Yeah. yeah, they haven't really pulled themselves a massive lead. They just technically have it. Hey, it's positive, OK? Yeah. It's in their favor. And it's a Typhon's Fang there for the Poseidon. So it went from bizarre of double lifesteal into even more bizarre. I guess, I mean, admittedly, with where he was, it was the only thing he could have gone into. But it is just going to be the fact that, well, now he's healing even more so when it comes down to it. So sustainability in lane yep. is more or less what he's looking for. And admittedly, with how much he's been ganked and, well, two and four, he kind of needs that to stay around. And one thing I think we'll see a bit more Typhon's Fang here or there is definitely the penetration that's yes. in that too. Because penetration getting changed this year, you still need pen in your builds and we keep talking it's about that a little bit. Find it. It's just where you come from it. And Typhon's is one that has been given some this year. And it's that, that question mark of, is it worthwhile? Is Diesel right now in a bad position, going to get stunned out, and Thor's in there. And Thor is in there, and Diesel's no longer there. Meanwhile, also, we saw at the same time, Barry and I did fall down to Sops in the mid lane, and but the pressure is now on Cope, and Cope is trying to buy time. He'll at least get one for one. Get screen though, gets a double kill, but can they get out of dodge in time? Well, Sops is coming around the right corner. That's going to be a good stun from Sybil, and setting up Shia for a death. A nice stun in return. They get the tower, but can they get out alive? And that's perfect from Spreen. Oh. Trying to stay alive. Can't juke those orders that stops in time. Meanwhile, in the jungle, Sybil will also take a spill. Four members of the Houdinis are dead. Just Heed remaining, who's just trying to defend a tier two here. And Megzion Tionsa kind of bounced back immediately after losing that gold here. Yeah, they didn't, they don't seem to care that much that they lost all that gold. And we had mentioned that Houdinis had only gotten, admittedly, like a 300 gold lead. Uh, that's been taken away again. It's about a thousand back in favor of Mexiety. Yep. And it's just tower for tower, and then all of those kills, just a four for two, I believe, that they just grabbed. Houdini's haven't been able to hold on to it. And again, once Thor's gone, that's where all of your effort is. I mean, he's nine and two, three and one for the Kukulin, so he's definitely having an impact. But nobody else is hurting as bad or are dealing as much damage as that as they are. So you need a little bit more, I think, coming from the rest of your team. Diversify where your targets are, because otherwise it's kill Thor, win game. Yeah, I will say Diesel, though, in that duo lane on that Merlin, hasn't had the greatest of games yeah, I was bullied. hoping for here. He's <laughs> just got even level with Sybil on his own team. His support had more farm there. So they've done a better job of making space for the support for Sybil. But it's come at the cost of Diesel being as effective. And right now, he's just going to have to continue to plug away and still keeping the aggression going. I mean, fighting it out right now. It's going to be an yeah, ult fight coming that. down from Nesfor. Where's he going to come? It doesn't matter. He's dead. Yeah. Well, it says Spreet just decided to dunk went, in there. That was a kill steal attempt. That's what that <laughs> one was. I'd have done it if I was a jungler in that situation. That's for sure. Just final things. Now, that last fight, however, that we just saw after the Gold Fury, I think a lot of what Mix IT Onset did there was realize they hit power spike items. A lot of items were just finished at the end of that last fight yeah. before it even happened. So then they just realized, hey, we've got a little bit of an item advantage. These extra passives are included now from these items. Let's get aggressive. And that's exactly what they did. Man fight in the solo lane, and that's expected to be seen. She is on the rotation over here, but remember, she only level 12. Keep an eye on these supports at a lower level, because they will be a little bit squishier than they realize, and they might get turned on. Mando bought a lot of time to get Sybil in, and now she's going to pop the ultimate. Still Spreen hanging around, and it's a nice use of the Cursed Onk here to try and cause a couple of problems. In comes Bayer and Eri at the same time, and this healthiness is good, but the Kraken is better. Mando Warrior dies, as does Sybil, and the rest of Anxiety Onset are nowhere to be found. Diesel coming out of base. Same can be said for Cup. That's one of those awkward calls where, if anything, you want... Oh, wow, the dunk from long range coming in. I didn't think he had Oof. the range or the touch for it, but that's another double kill for Spreen that comes through. Spreen's definitely come to play today. I was going to try to go on like, okay, that's when like you should be on the left-hand side looking for something. Get the tower. Find something elsewhere on the map because there's five people in solo lane. 
And now, well, you're feeling the brunt of that, then losing the follow-up fight. Fire Giant's a half health. Great call on the Fire Giant, in my opinion, too. Sure, with a Heimdall, it won't take too long. At level 18, they should be able to bring this one down. Still no one from Anxiety in the area, sure, because four members are dead, and Cope's like, well, what do you want me to do as a Cerberus yeah. in this situation? If I go in, I'll probably die, and maybe they'll get even more. There's, like, a slim chance that Cerberus is able to find the right amount of damage, like, right at the right time with a blink, but his blink maybe not as consistent as he would like. Good zone, just one hit straight from Houdini's would stop him from getting in there. And Cerberus isn't exactly known for his burst. We were kind yep. of talking about that earlier. Even now, with more damage online, he's not going to be the one you're looking at as the giant fire giant stealer. And I want to come back to damage again, as you were just saying there, Gox. When you look at those damage charts on the left-hand side, the majority of Manxiety Onset's damage has come from Mando, who's a solo yep. laner. He's going to have that damage. But then it's, you know, Sybil and Cope as the top damage dealers, but you've got a Merlin and an army. That doesn't make much sense to me. A spring going to dunk in, find the double tap and the wall. And the turnaround from Mando will buy him a second, but not long enough as he'd had the ultimate available. And, you know, following the conversation up for damage, it actually is on Spreen doing what he just did. He's shutting down any member that happens to be or seems to be a threat. He's stopped Sops. He's stopped Diesel. Now he's starting to stop Mando. This Oni Fury, as risky, quote unquote, as it could be, admittedly, it might just bait out more kills for you as Houdini. Really could, but maybe now he didn't find a target. Now he's on a wild ride. Has to use the beast to get away. Shell use to cope in there with the follow up of no beads available. Cope will get that kill. Merlin damage from the arcane form does good work to take down Nestful as Sybil continues to chase. Fix better of it as Diesel now falls and Sybil's got to get away. The healthy targets of Houdini's are here and they're here to fight. And they're chasing down Sybil one more time. Cope baby gets a kill in the back though. They're going to be able to lock it. Spreen still mm. looking for blood 12 and 2 is not good enough for him yeah. but now he's in a dangerous area actually forced to ult potentially try and get out but he might dunk back down the up down could be available and will be spring gets the kill but all this focus onto a civil i'm not so sure about mando trying to give chase to spring knowing the hammer is on cooldown and the wall too pin will at least force out the beads meanwhile in the jungle the chase is on the sops and he don't care about cope he's gonna try and run down but it's a great stun out of the support that's if you need anything coming from Cope at this point in the game, it's either a four-man ult that's no. going to be able to come through or a stun like that to find Peel. Also, a little frightening moment with that yeah. blink coming through if you're Sops. If you get this kill on the spring, that's something huge, but Mando can't even confirm that one. The healing will come through from his ult. Don't keep chasing, They're Mando. Just fighting everywhere. Do not keep chasing because oh, the respawns are coming through. Oh, and his option of pathing has put him in trouble. Barry and Ari should be able to put him in the pool. Now the wrap around with the tidal wave, and that's a death of Mando that's deserved for greed. Just say greed in chat because that's all that was. There's been like three or four of those as well for Mexiety where it's just like, you know, guys, you didn't need to die there. And it all yep. kind of started with Diesel. The minute he dived past that tier one early on in this game, it was nothing but Houdini saying, wait a minute, guys. These, this is the easiest bait of our life. We don't even have to be that low. Houdini's These guys just want to come in. Get the fury. They get a kill. They get a two kills. And some of that, I'll look back and say, if Mando Warriors are around there, he might be able to help out with that. So you remember how earlier that fury didn't make a big difference? Mm -hmm. Now they're starting to make differences. Oh, and yeah. not only that, it's been so consistent for Houdini's. Almost double the kills, but the gold lead is extended to almost 5,000. Experience is so heavily in their favor, and that's with Shia having such a large deficit over there. Sybil can try to do as much as he wants, but two members still with Fire Giant. Admittedly, you think Fire Giant on Hunter, best combo you can have. Spring's 13 and 2. I love for him to have it. Stay sustained, stay in this fight. Just deal more damage. Popped by Houdini's, and Sybil's going to bring somebody in looking towards Nesfer there. But Nesfer doesn't really mind, neither does the Houdini's. Still relatively healthy. It's only Shia that's slow. Chase still on for the Heimdall, though, and Nesfer will finally fall. But Heed will take out the jungler in response. Heed now turning towards Mando, who's trapped between a rock and a hard place. And with the Whirlpool going down, there's no chance of escape. It's three against four in mid, but without a fire giant, who needs the better of continuing the aggression? They do the opposite of what Mixiety has been doing. They look at it, and admittedly, they could probably dive, find a kill onto Sybil with how low he was, maybe find the Phoenix. But the risk outweighs what they're going to get from it. So they're just like, you know what? Pause. Fire Giant's going to come up in less than a minute. Let's back off. We can set ourselves up. We've been winning these fights. We kill off Sops here, and we're set up perfectly. That's a good crack and to force the Aegis. Yep. Well, he's dead anyway. Uses the Aegis and then still dies afterwards. Don't know what you're doing that far up in mid lane when your team's down, unfortunately. But this is kind of where it gets a little bit messy now. 23 minutes in, 9k gold lead. Fire Giant about to spawn again. 
We'll see what Houdinis can make of this next one. Do you defend this FG if you have anxiety on set, or do you look for a Phoenix Man. defense line? If you're Sybil, I think you can risk going in there. I think you can just you send can the go, one, but, man. But just Sybil. I don't think Diesel should be over there. You might be able to send Mando as well. Like as the respawns come through, mm. it depends on where the lay of the land is going to be. Now they have four people available. You can risk the fight, but if I'm Diesel and Cope, the minute things turn south, I'm running. There, there is a benefit of being a Mando warrior in this situation. You can suicide and not have to worry about it because you're not worth any gold you're anymore. You're 0 and 8 already yeah. anyway, so. You are literally worthless, so a mobile <laughs> ward might be more useful to the team at this point. Cope trying to defend this FG and see what's going on. Actually gets Good himself kill. a kill against three. And now the rotation in from Sybil will support with Diesel. Round the back comes Mando looking for an ult and finds one. Spring Spring's gets up. to the sky in time. And the dunk goes to the back line. But great play from Diesel to get away. The chase is still on for him. And still on the back side of that fight too. Sybil battling alongside Mando Warrior trying to bring down the Hal Health Buzz. And Sops is on the way. But is Sops going to get him in time to really make a difference? He's not needed so far as Sybil will at least pick up Shia. They're doing good control here as well. Good body block, good jukes for Mando to keep him alive. Just not enough to sustain through everything. Sybil now is incredibly low. Sops decided to go for the Pyromancer, so they at least get something out of this other than the 3 for 3 trade. But I don't know if it's worth it because now he's isolated. Yep, we'll see what he can do from here because now Sops under pressure. Did at least drop the ultimate down, but that won't prevent Heed from doing any damage to him whatsoever. He gets himself another kill. Now 9, 1, and 7 on this Kakula. Well, they finally, well, successfully, I should say, stopped the Fire Giant. Mm. I would argue that's the best fight that Mexiety have gotten in the late game with the way the trades have been going. It's definitely I would argue felt like Houdini's they... have shifted this in their favor more and more as the game has gone on. Does it feel like Mexiety on set have had a five-man group in yet? I don't Not think so. Not really. Seen one. I think every Staggered. time we've seen Houdini's go for an objective or group up like that, someone just 30 seconds early on in Mixiety had decided to either dive a tier two too yep. early, dive into the jungle too early, get caught out in mid lane way too soon for your team to be around to help you. And so there's just been a lot of moments where they've been one man down. It's been a 4v5, if not even worse, a 3v5 for them in some of these scenarios. And unfortunately for them, Houdini's have managed to keep their most powerful alive throughout almost every single engagement. You had mentioned 9, 1, and 7 here for Heed, but Spring's now 15 and 2. And I'm going to keep bringing that up because yep. that 2 needs to start becoming the 7, the 4 that they have on their team. It needs to go higher if you're a Mexiety here. Sybil and Mando on this right hand side. Now, Fire Giant looks to be contested potentially. Mando's splitting the wave as Sybil's trying to get some stacks and clear the buff at the same time. But FG is at about 50%. In comes Cope, in comes Diesel, but in the sky is Spring. Spring's going to come down on Cope, but just misses it. Same time, though, Kraken was he good enough to find the kill onto the Cerberus. Now Diesel disappears as if he wasn't there. Houdini's are living up to the name. And, well, Mando going to get caught out one more time. The stun's not going to connect this time around. He's going to be low health. He's looking to be able to run away. They're not going to chase him. Stops is just as tasty a target, maybe even easier to kill off. But that's going to be that invisibility. Mm. Well, saving him at least for a little bit. The meat grinder continues, and now Houdini's five men strong. They might not even need the FG here. They could nope. potentially look for the end. I mean, they're... Going for it, as they have it. Shia has enough sustain to be able to come in here. If not, you've got Heed full health. Their health bars are not at all worse for wear, and there's not a lot of damage left from Exciety. This Phoenix should go down soon, if not the members first. Mando's just getting burned. I will say, I think my anxiety on at the start of this game. They had a good start. The picks have kind of let them down, I would say, in the team play. Because as the game went on, Houdini stuck to their game plan, yep. and they look like they should find game one in this best of three finals. Sybil, the final man to fall, or should I say Spreen, and the shutdown gold will at least be for Cope, but that won't be good enough. 27 minutes in, and they're going to try and get a couple more kills, but the game will still end with Mexiety Onza losing 19 to 38 in kills. They did finally kill Spreen, though, so mm -hmm. I, I'll give them that credit. If you take Spreen out of that game, he had 17 kills at the end, it was 38 to 18, all of a sudden that comes down to 20 to 18, and it's a lot closer of a fight for you. It's just those moments where if, if you can control that Thor a little bit better as the game progressed, mm -hmm. maybe you find yourself in a better position. But it just felt like you said they had that control early on. And normally I would say it slipped out of their hands. They kind of threw it towards Houdini's. They were just like, all right, you have this. I'll dive a tier two. I'll dive your jungle and just, you know, take these kills. They're free. The good news is it's not over just yet. Hopefully, after the quick break, we'll get a break down the desk. And Myth can tell us all about how Megxiteon Set can get themselves back into this.